kids of Aldersgate. I hope everyone had a wonderful Easter. It was such a glorious day. I love, love that I heard from so many of you and got to see pictures or see you on Facebook talking about resurrection eggs and learning more about resurrection eggs. It was such a glorious day. Even though we weren't together, we got to be together virtually, which is really, really cool. So friends, we are going to continue talking about Jesus and some really cool stuff from the Bible that some of you may not know about. But like always, before we get started, let's open with a prayer. So everybody take that deep breath with me. Dear God, thank you for dying for our sins and loving us so much that you were willing to give your life for us. We are so thankful and so grateful, and we want to be humble and be here to do things for others and to learn from you and to learn to show love and kindness and all of the things that you teach us. We are thankful for our many blessings. We are thankful that we are able to learn at school online. And God, we want to pray today for all of those people that are working to help keep us safe. We are praying for our teachers that are helping us learn at home. And for all of the people that are making sure we have what we need. We thank you and love you. And all God's children say, Amen. So friends, last week we did the resurrection eggs together, and I hope all of you got a chance to see that. If you didn't, it's not too late, because the resurrection story is a story for every day, not just Easter Sunday. You can tell that story anytime. So if you didn't get a chance to watch last Sunday's Sunday School lesson, you can go back to YouTube or Facebook and watch it. But what you may remember from that resurrection story is that the very best egg of all was egg number 12 because it's empty. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive in all of us. And so today, I want to tell you a little bit about what happened after Easter morning, after Jesus was alive. So we're going to start from the moment when they went and found that tomb was empty. So they got to the tomb, and let me read right from the Bible. So if you need to pause and go get your Bible... We are going to read from Luke chapter 24, and I'm going to start right at verse 1. But on the first day of the week at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. So they found a big stone like this one ugh, rolled away, and they found the cloth that Jesus had been wrapped in. Remember, it had some spices in it. So they found that laying inside the tomb, and Jesus was not there. So it was, they were amazed, they were scared, they didn't know what to think. So they did not find the body. While they were a little puzzled about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women that had come to look for Jesus were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but he has risen. So the angels came and told them that Jesus wasn't there. Jesus was alive again. And so they got very excited and they started to tell everybody. So today's story is a different story, and I don't know that we've talked a lot about this at Sunday school, but it's called The Walk to Emmaus. So I want to tell you just some things about The Walk to Emmaus first. So there were a couple of men, before I read it right from the Bible, that were on their way to walk from Jerusalem to a town named Emmaus. So I want to tell you something about that. It was seven miles, seven miles from Jerusalem to Emmaus. So guess what? I looked this up. That is 36,960 feet. So right now I want you to stand up and I want you to take 10 steps. Okay, and I know some of you are like, I don't want to get up. I don't want to take 10 steps. Well, they were taking 
36,960 steps from Jerusalem to Emmaus. And you think, Miss Melanie, why are you telling us that? But it's going to be even more important later when you hear what they did at the end. So I want to now go to a part of the Bible that's also in Luke chapter 24, verse 13. And this is a story called The Walk to Emmaus. Now, on the same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. See, I didn't make that up. It's right here in the Bible. About seven miles from Jer Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, so they were talking about how these women had told his disciples that Jesus wasn't in the tomb, that the tomb was empty, and angels told them that he was alive and he was back on earth again. And they were probably thinking, what in the world kind of story is this? What is happening? So while they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. Jesus himself. But wait, but wait. But their eyes didn't recognize him. For some reason, their eyes did not recognize Jesus. God kept their eyes from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you're walking along? They stood still looking sad. So they were probably thinking, who is this guy? Everybody's talking about what happened to Jesus. Everybody's talking about how he was hung on a cross and he died. And then his, some of his family and friends went to the tomb to find his body and it was gone. And angels came and said he was alive. And they're thinking, who is this guy that doesn't know anything that's going on? So what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still looking sad and confused. Then one of them said, answering him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. And how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. And some women from our group astonished us. They were at the tomb early this morning and they didn't find his body. And they did not find his body. They came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. So they're telling the whole story of what happened to this man that's walking with them because they think, I can't believe he doesn't know what's going on. And kids, guess what? It was Jesus. It was Jesus that was walking along this road to Emmaus with, with them. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. To not believe. Was it not necessarily necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then Jesus reminded them of the prophecies that were told. Kids, we talked about this back in the Old Testament. Then beginning with Moses, which is in the Old Testament, and all of his prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself. So Jesus went back and was telling them, that this, the Bible, the prophets told us, Moses told us, this was God's plan all along. This was God's plan all along. And as they came near the village to which they were going, the village of Emmaus, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they said, stay with us because it's getting dark and the day is nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table, when he was at the table with them, he took bread blessed it, and broke the bread, like communion bread. And guess what happened when he did that? They recognized him as Jesus. They recognized him. When Jesus took and broke that bread, their eyes were open and they recognized him, and then he vanished from their sight. So those two men got to walk along with Jesus. And he told them how this was God's plan all along. It was so amazing. But their eyes were open. Let me tell you why those number of steps is important. Then their eyes were open and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, 
Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road? Couldn't we tell? Couldn't they tell? Couldn't they feel that it was Jesus? That same hour after their breaking of bread, which was eating their dinner, that same hour, they got up and they were so excited, kids, that they turned right around and headed back to Jerusalem. The same day. Why is that so important? Because how many miles had they already walked? They had already walked seven miles. And they were going to turn around. They were so excited to go share the good news. That's why we call it the good news. They were so excited to go share the good news of Jesus that they turned around and headed back the seven miles, the 36,960 steps. So I want you to count your steps today and see how close you get to 36,000 because you know I run a lot and I don't even get close to that many steps in a day. So they were so excited to go back to Jerusalem to share the good news. So what an amazing story. So you can go to the book of Luke, chapter 24, go to verse 13, and read the story of the walk to Emmaus and share it with your families. It is a really cool, amazing story that they got to walk along with Jesus. Isn't that amazing? And they were tired, but they were so excited they were willing to walk seven miles back. Wow. Wow, what a story. All right, kids, so that this week I want you to share that story with your family and friends because it's a really cool story. But why is it important to us? What does that mean to us? God had a plan. We learned about God's plan from the prophets in the Old Testament. And we knew God foretold the coming of Jesus. If God had such a big plan for Jesus, he has a plan for all of us. He has a plan for all of us. He is there. God is there for all of us. And God has a plan for all of us. So we can feel safe and feel loved knowing that God is there for us and he has a plan for all of us. Isn't that amazing? Whew! Wow. You see my friend Zacchaeus is with us. Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus likes that story. He loves that story and was very excited to be here today to share the story of the walk to Emmaus. Okay, friends, so I want you to think about, and we're going to pray right now and give thanks for God's big plan and God's plan for all of us. So deep breath again, friends. Dear God, thank you for always hearing our prayers. Thank you for being right by our side even when things are happening that we don't understand. I pray that we all will never stop wanting to learn more about you. Please help us to be wise and humble and helpful and, and brave and to listen and to admit that we don't know everything, that we need to turn to the Bible, that we need to turn to your word because you remind us that you love us and you're there for the us, and we love you. Thank you, God, for everything. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, kids, for joining us today for the story of the walk to Emmaus. I look forward to seeing you all again next Sunday when we'll have a new lesson, and it's going to be a lesson on being humble. And next week's lesson, we're going to use balloons always fun. So if you have a balloon at home, you can have it ready for next week. Thanks, friends. Have a great week, and I'll see you soon. Bye!